Hello guys, in this tutorial I'll be showing us how to use the Binance app as a beginner and also as a pro because there are so many features on the Binance app that require you to know that you might not be aware of. So in this tutorial I'll be showing us that. So the first thing you need to do and um, you should take note of is as a user you need to be registered and verified on the Binance app. As you can see there's a user interface where you can access your profile on the Binance app and you can see it is displayed top left corner here so then there's also the deposit section there's a deposit section here there's also the referral section where you get your referral code strategy trading there's a place for you to earn then there are lots more then if you want to deposit via your bank or card if you want to sell via p2p all are displayed here but one thing you need to take off uh, take note of as a nigerian you can't actually deposit via bank or through card as this is banned in nigeria so the only way you can deposit or fund your account is via p2p so this is a p2p section but i'm not going to go into that right now let me just touch other parts before we come into the p2p section so we'll click on our YouTube profile here at the top left corner so you can see how you have to be verified for you to trade on binance now i am a verified user of binance i was trying to do my advanced verification that's why it didn't it didn't work out that's why it's showing failed here so but the first level verification is very simple you just have to provide a detail and boom they'll just verify your account your national identity details and your account will be verified now you can switch your binance to binance light or binance pro you can see the binance light option is not turned on so if i click on it now i'll switch it to binance light and fewer i'll have fewer user interfaces like the sections i'll have to navigate to be fewer compared to the binance pro of which i'm using right now then you have a tax center a reward center we have binance actually gives their users rewards either uh, as a first time user or first time deposit there are rewards you'll be giving for you to claim so you have to come to the reward center then your refer id if you want to refer one thing that is so cool about binance is if you get to refer someone and that person begins to trade and deposit on binance you begin to earn that is just it so that is one of the ways you can actually make money on binance if you don't want to trade or if you don't have the knowledge of trading one of the things you should take note of is refer you can refer a lot of people to binance and if they begin to trade or deposit you begin to earn it's as easy as that binance has introduced their binance gift card and binance card you can pay with the card you can redeem your gift cards then gifts will be given and all of that then payment methods the payment method you would love to use then security settings and all of that so you can actually if you click on the settings here we can actually change our currency you understand now my currency is actually showing nigeria so if you're not a nigerian and you want to change your currency to your native currency you just have to click on settings then come to currency you see it you put it the language you can change it to whatever language that suits you mine is english then appearance dark mode mine is dark mode then what else if you want to clear catch on binance all these are things you can do on your own now let's go to another important section on the binance app okay now this is the binance interface the first interface you meet when you log into your binance app so we'll see as you can see 
you can see BNB BUSD, BTC BUSD, ETH BUSD. One thing you need to take note of as a Binance user is you are going to be dealing with pairs. For you to be able to trade on Binance, you are going to be dealing with pairs. So BUSD is a pair. It's actually a fiat, a stable coin, the Binance dollar, which is a BUSD. It has almost all the coins on Binance has that as their pair. Another a stable coin that we'll be using and that is actually used for a pair in Binance is USDT. We have BUSD. So, so seeing BNB start BUSD, that is a pair on Binance. BNB, BUSD. So, for you to, to trade BNB, for instance, now it has to be paired with BUSD. So, if you have BUSD, you can, you can trade or buy BNB. You understand? And after that, you can sell your BNB to get your BUSD back. And that is applicable also to ET BTC and ETH. Do you understand? So on the first page here, we'll see the coins that are actually hot for the day. You have BNB, BUSD, you have BTC, BUSD, you have ETH, BUSD, you have Look, BUSD, and the rest. And another thing I need to, you to take note of, is, is you just have to slide to your left which is the gainers the losers and the 24 hours volume so we have the gainers here we have the gainers after the hot you can see gainers so these are the coins that have actually pumped hard that have actually gained or risen a lot in, in the past 24 hours then you can see losers the coins that have actually dipped or dipped in the last 24 hours you can see them here then 24 hours volume these are the coins that have been traded the most or with the highest trading volume in the last 24 hours you can see btc usdt like i said earlier there are so many uh, cryptocurrency pairs that will be dealing with on binance usdt is a stable coin and it has so many pairs on the binance platform so if you have usdt that is theta dollar which is a stable coin uh, you can pay it with if you have it you can actually buy btc and you can swap your btc to get your usdt which is applicable to this one also so you can see btc usdt pair btc busd pair you can see the volume that has been traded eth usd ETH BUSD and ETH USDT, you can see everything. Then BTC USDC. USDC is another pair. It's a stable coin to stable dollar. They also have BTC. So there are so many pairs we are going to be looking. We have odd pairs where you can, you can pair one crypto coin with another cryptocurrency that is not actually a stable coin. And that is why we are seeing ETH BTC here. So if you have BTC, you can buy. ETH that is Ethereum. If you have Ethereum, you can swap it to get your BTC. There are some pairs that you'll be seeing that actually Ethereum that those coins are paired with Ethereum ETH. Do you understand? So these are some of the stuff I would like you to take note of. So on below here you see markets. Below here you see markets. You see markets, you see trades, you see futures, you see wallets. So, for you to access your wallet, for you to access your wallet, you just have to click on wallet. So, you, from there, you can see the overview of your wallet. You can see your portfolio, what you have in your spot account, what you have in your funding account, what you have in your cross margin account. What you have in your isolated margin account, what you have in your USD margin features account, your coin margin features account, your N, your options, all of that. So this is the overview. Then when you slide to the left, you have, then you now navigate to each of these sections. So we have our spot here. We have our funding. We have our cross margin isolated wallets. So all this is the overview displaying everything. But when I slide to my left, you see, 
I've accessed my spot wallet. So it will display all the coins and their prices, the, the coins and the amount of the coins that I'm actually holding on that spot. So if I switch to my funding, the same thing. If I switch to my margin, the same thing. So that is how to access your wallet on Binance. It's as easy as that. So another thing we'll look at is how to deposit. So you can actually access the deposit page via your wallet or you can come back to your home here to access the deposit here as display deposit naira you can access it via there or you can access it via the wallet session and if you want to deposit on binance you can actually choose the coin you want to deposit do you understand if you want to deposit on binance you choose the coin you want to deposit so let's say we want to deposit a bitcoin so we'll just click on deposit for instance so we'll just click on deposit for instance let's wait for it to load so now you can see if you want to deposit there are two subheadings here we have if you want to deposit crypto and if you want to deposit fiat crypto are all the cryptocurrencies you know then fiat is money do you understand the normal money, the normal hard currency money, like the Naira. So if I want to fund uh, my account with crypto, I'll click on the crypto section. If I want to fund my account with fiat, I'll click the fiat section. But as a Nigerian, I can't deposit fiat. So the only way I can deposit is via crypto. So let's say I want to deposit BTC, that is Bitcoin. So I'll just scroll and look for Bitcoin or I can search for it here in the search options above. You can see the coins that I've said before, TRX, USDT, BTC, BUSD, BNB. So let's say I want to deposit BTC, that is Bitcoin, I'll click on Bitcoin. So now you can see this is my Bitcoin uh, address. Uh, and it is built on the Bitcoin blockchain uh, or network. So, as you can see, one thing you need to understand about cryptocurrencies is that they are built on blockchains and they have networks. So, for Bitcoin now, the first option you are seeing here, the first option you are seeing here is actually this is the bitcoin blockchain so if this wallet address displayed here is actually built on the bitcoin network or blockchain do you understand so if i am to copy this address right now or save this image someone can actually scan this code this barcode here and if you want to send, uh, make btc you can just scan the barcode and boom my wallet address will just be displayed and it can send me but if i don't to do that i can actually click on the copy icon displayed here this copy icon and my address will be copied for bitcoin deposits one thing i need to want you to take note of is the network here the network here so if you had if you want to deposit on binance i have to take note of that so that somebody will not send bitcoin to an address and the network will be different now this is what i mean if you if if i come here this one is bnb so the bitcoin this bitcoin address is built on bep20 that is bnb smart chain so you can see the address is different from that of the bitcoin so if I slide to the left, this one is built on is built on BNB Bitcoin chain. That is BEP2. You can see the address is still different. This one is built on BTC Swagwit network. 
this one is built on ethereum network so these are the four networks by which you can send or receive bitcoin on binance so if i'm sending my address to someone i have to specify the network i'll just click copy i'll send it to the person okay i'll tell the person okay i i want to deposit or i want to receive bitcoin and my network is bitcoin network do you understand so with that if they send if the person is sending he will specify on his own wallet that he's sending to bitcoin network and boom you see the deposit a lot and your deposit has been successful you can't copy this address and tell the person that you sent uh, is bev20 network no it's very very wrong so you have to take note of this so if you are sending bitcoin or any coin you have to take note of the network and some networks has higher charges compared to others bev20 has lesser charge compared to bitcoin network uh, trc20 which is not here for for bitcoin but it's there for other coins as lower charges compared to the rest so people prefer to use bev20 and trc20 when depositing it's as easy as that so let's say you want to deposit usdt now okay we'll click on usdt so you can see ethereum that's his network the charges are very very high so people don't like using ethereum to deposit so people prefer bnb bnb network uh usdt that is built on bnb network that is by 20 or they'll go for trc20 which is the tron the tron blockchain is the trc20 so usdt that is built on tron network trc20 this you just have to copy click on copy and you specify in the place you want to deposit from that we are actually depositing to a trc20 usdt wallet address so that you don't copy you don't so that you don't you not copy an address from trc20 then you go and specify that the network is solana you just lose those coins that you are trying to deposit so another thing that we are going to look at is how to withdraw so i'll just have to click on withdraw so if you want to withdraw to an external wallet maybe another wallet or maybe you want to send coin to a friend or anything if you want to withdraw out of binance you have also have the crypto you have the uh, you have the cash so for instance uh, let me see uh, i want to withdraw alpine fan token so i'll just click on it then they will ask me to provide details of the address you see so they will provide details they will ask me to provide details of the address so this first place here is where i'll put the wallet address you can see the attorney to long press to paste or you can click on this you can click on this icon here for you to scan that barcode if the person sends you a barcode instead of sending you the wallet address so if you click on that it will take you to camera then from there you can scan the barcode from your phone or that person's phone then from there they will ask you to select network sometimes binance will just automatically detect the network of that wallet address without you specifying it but sometimes you have to specify the network manually so you just click if you click on the bnb smart chain network if you just click here it will give you the options here you can change network so this one is only bit so from there you put the amount that you want to send then they'll tell you how much they will charge so at this point here if we told how much you'll be charged then how much the person will receive so you, have, you can see the withdrawal limit here 4, 403 appine fan token so you just click on withdrawal so you just have to click on withdrawal here 
after you've done all of the above um you'll be asked to verify your security either google authenticator sms code and email then your withdrawal will be initiated so another thing we'll look at is the transfer so on this transfer on binance you can transfer between wallets between your features wallet between your funding wallet the funding wallet don't get it wrong is actually your p2p wallet do you understand the funding wallet is actually your p2p wallet so if you have coins that you want to sell at the p2p market you have to transfer from either your spot or wherever you have the coin if it's in your features account if it's in your spot you just have to click on transfer you can see it is specified here that if you want to transfer from spot to funding you can see so you are transferring from spots it means you have your coin or your your crypto your your tokens in your spot wallet and you want to transfer them to funding you understand then here in this section in this section this is where you select the coin that you want to transfer do you understand then in this section here you can switch if you have the the, the coin or the, the the cryptocurrency in your p2p or funding you just have to switch i want to transfer it to your spot that is just how to switch then in this place you put the amount you want to transfer so this is what i mean maybe i want to transfer bitcoin i'll just click on bitcoin i'll put maximum for instance so from here i mean i'm sending uh, 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 0 0.0004 btc from my spot wallet to my funding my p2p wallet then maybe i want to switch i'll just click here you see i'm sending from my funding to my spot so if i have bitcoin if I, or if i bought bitcoin in my p2p or funding wallet i'll just have to transfer it from my funding to my spot wallet and i'll impute the amount then i'll just click on confirm transfer beneath here and boom i'll just transfer so that is how to transfer and you can actually transfer from your funding to your coin sorry uh, the other wallets that you have your features wallet and all of that there's another way to transfer of which i'm going to show us the second time to load but i'm pretty sure you understood what i said so let us go back so now now let's take it that you have opened your binance account you have verified and now you have these tips at your you have all these tips so what do you do next you have to go ahead look at markets so you click markets below here you look, maybe you want to check out you want to see a coin or you want to see the coins that are trading on binance you just have to click on markets that is displayed below here and we'll see the different markets that are available we have the spot market we have the features and we have the zones now under the spots we have favorites if you have coins that you love trading or you love to trade or you love to buy and hold on the spot wallet this you can just add them to your favorite section so the next we'll see is the bnb from favorite we'll move to bnb so remember we talked about pairs so for a coin to be tradable on binance more it's, it's more like broken in forest or currency pairs in forex if you are a forex trader you know there are coins that are trade uh, that are paired with usdc uh, Japan, uh, chinese yen you have the australian dollar different different pairs Do you understand that is applicable with binance and cryptocurrency for any coin to be traded it has to be paired with another currency so for this section all these coins you are seeing here cake caz local trx srp so boga dot avac are all paired with bnb so if you have bnb 
you can trade these coins that is what it means to pay to have a currency a cryptocurrency pay so if i have bnb i can buy cake and i can sell my cake to get my bnb back it's as simple as that that is also applicable to btc so you can see the btc pairs do you understand if you have btc you can buy ethereum you can buy bnb you can buy xrp and you can sell all of these to get your btc back do you understand now let's go to odds odds are all of the coins now let me give you an extra knowledge in cryptocurrency we have the king coin which is bitcoin then we have alt coins or alternative coins any other coin apart from bitcoin is an alt coin do you get that every other coin in the cryptocurrency world apart from bitcoin is an alt coin or are alt coins do you understand so under this alt coins we'll see ethereum we'll see we'll see xrp pair we have trx we have dodge we have dots that other coins can be paired with so now like i said we have the king coin the king coin is actually called bitcoin is actually called the king coin because its blockchain is unique to itself it doesn't share any other it doesn't share its blockchain with any other coin or token do you understand i have to understand the difference between coin and token ethereum bitcoin is a coin because it has its own blockchain ethereum is a coin because it has its own block chain trx tron is a coin because it has its own blockchain solana is a coin because it has its own blockchain uh, matic is a coin because it has its own blockchain do you understand now the other tokens that are built on this the other cryptocurrencies that are built on this all these blockchains that are called are called tokens do you understand so for instance now dodge is actually built on ethereum blockchain it's built on ethereum blockchain so it is a token not a coin i hope you understand that concept well i'm going to do a video between that uh, specifically for the understanding of the difference between coin and token so that's by the way so you can see alt coins here you can see the different xmr pairing with eth that's the pair xmr pair you can see xmr you can see other pairs that are paired with xrp you can see win pair being paired with trx you can see trx being paired with xrp that's the only pair available for xrp trx that is strong then you can see all the pairs that are available for eth so if i click on dodge and i put off the rest you can see shiba is actually paired with dodge both are tokens that are built on the ethereum network so they are but here you can actually pair shiba with dodge then we have dot you can see b dot being paired with dot dot has its own polka dot it has its own blockchain so it's actually a coin and not a token so with this we've moved from odds to usdt here we'll see all the whole cryptocurrency pairs that are paired with usdt from there this is also applicable to busd we'll see all the cryptocurrency pairs that are that are paired with BUSD, that is Binance Dollar. That is Binance Dollar. Then we have Fiat. You can see now this is more like the forest aspect. Now we can see Bitcoin being paired with Australian Dollar. We can see Ethereum being paired with Australian Dollar. Then this is another current uh, pair. USDT being paired with BIDR. This is another currency pair with us uh, cryptocurrency is being paired with uh, co uh being paired with fiat free money so we can see the euro here 
USDT, BTC, ETH, being BNB, all being paid the euro. You can see the Great Britain pounds, those being paid the that, and so many others. So all these are available on the spot wallet. Do you understand? All these are available on the spot wallet. So let us say you want to buy a coin. Now, before we buy a coin, we need to understand the difference between spot wallet and futures wallet. Now, on the spot wallet, you can let me click on trades here. Let me see, let me say spot. Let me not even say spot wallet. Let me say spot trade and futures trade. Now, this is this is uh, the this is a spot trade. If you want to buy a coin on spot, it means you are just buying that coin and you are waiting for the coin to rise. Then you take profits. You are not leveraging on anything. You are not you are not buying with leverage. Leverage in the sense that you are borrowing money to go and buy. No, you are not doing that. But on the futures wallet or the futures trade, you have the opportunity to leverage. Do you understand? You have the opportunity to leverage. That is one of the major difference between the spot a, between the spot trade and the futures trade so for instance if you want to buy on if you want to buy stg stg was newly launched on binance that was last week it was launched this august so if you want to buy stg and another thing another major difference between the spot and the futures trade uh, is actually the buying amount you can use any amount to buy on sports sorry on futures but on sports the minimum amount you can use to buy is ten dollars okay for instance i want to buy stg and i want to buy at this current price i'll just have to 100 percent so with this amount of usd that i have this is the amount of stg i can get that is 0 0.1 but I can't buy because it is not up to ten dollars. So if I click on buy now, Binance will give me a notification. Total order value should be more than ten US dollars. So the minimum you can buy on the spot is ten dollars. But if it's on the features, any amount can actually go. You can use zero point one as far as you are leveraging. You can leverage and you can buy. So that is the difference between spot and the features. So what do I? tell us next is understanding orders now on on any cryptocurrency exchange there's there are there are orders and you can only trade and you can only trade or buy a coin at those available orders now there are different types of orders available you have the buy orders and the sell orders so for the buy orders we can see this section here if i click on this section here i will see the different orders you can see then you see the amount you see the total all these are not really necessary for now what i really need you to understand is the different orders so these are buy orders if i click here i'll see the sell orders if i click here i'll see the buy orders did you see where i clicked if you click here buy orders if you click here sell orders so i want to i'll just click on this market here for me to assess the different orders and i'm going to explain them for us so i'll just click on markets so these are the available uh, buy orders that are available on the on the buy order on the spot trade so these are the available buy orders that are available on the spot trade. We have the market order. We have the market order. We have the limit order. We have the stop limit order. And we have the OCO order. Now the OCO order is one cancel the order. One cancel the order. That is the meaning of OCO. So the first one we'll be looking at here is the market order. 
now i'll just click on market and i am in the market order now when you want when you are using the market order it means if i want to buy a coin at the market order it means we are buying that coin at the current market price now this is the current market price of stg usdt that is paid with usdt so it's 0 0.300 so if I, if i click on the market order and i click on 100 percent it means i want to use the whole of the money i have in this my spot uh, or, or the amount of years that i have to buy uh, stg at the current market price if i just click on buy immediately another will be filled and the price the current price of the market there will just my order will be initiated immediately it means you are buying the market at that current market price do you understand then let's click on limit order now if i click on limit order it means i want to buy stg this coin at a particular price do you understand i am not buying it at the specific market price now if you look at this price here if you look at this price displayed here it is different from the price displayed here do you understand so it means if i click on 100 percent that that is i want to use all my money to buy stg at this limit price it means stg will have to rise from it will have to rise from 0 0.7280 to 0 0.7289 before my my order will be initiated do you understand if i'm buying at the limit order it means STG will have to rise from 0 0.7280 to 0 0.7289 before my order will be initiated. If not, my order will just be filled into the order book. Now, these are the other books. These are the other books. This is the sell. This is the buy order book. This is the sell order book. So many people are specifying different prices here. So some people are some people want to buy at the rates at the rate of let me show you some people want to buy at the rate of 0 0.7252 so they have filled that order there so they wait their, their their order will be will be hanging in this place in these open orders it will be hanging there waiting for the price to get to that point before the 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 the, the coin will just automatically buy because the order have been placed just that the order wasn't placed at the market price they have to you have to wait for a particular time a particular price that you specified for you to buy the coin before it will be initiated so if i fill my order at this current price i'll have to wait for stg to rise to 0 0.7289 before my order will be filled if not my order will just be hanging here my order will just be hanging here it will not be filled my money will still be intact until the price gets to that point before my order will be filled it's as easy as that so we'll look at another stop i'll uh, look at another order which is the stop limit now there's something called stop limit stop limit is also more like stop loss so there are three sections here you have the stop usdt limit usdt and the amount so now if you're setting if you are setting your stop limit it means let's say for instance you've bought stg at limit order or market order then you said okay you want this this limit usdt to buy or let's say you want it to buy at a particular price now let's say you want it to buy at the rate of at the price of 0.7 300 uh, so we want it to buy at the rate of 0 0.7300 if you have then the limit usdt you, is you have to set it two units above above you have to set it two limits uh 0. Point, you have to set it two limits above this stop usdt do you understand the limit USDT, you have to set two units above the stop USDT. So, for instance, that would be 0 0.7320. Uh, 
you see these two units above this one so if the price gets to 0 0.7300 it will not buy until it gets to 0 0.7320 then it will, be, it will be initiated so the the coin will actually be hanging do you understand so that's for stop limits you uh, stop limits it's as simple as that then the last one is oco so with this oco you can actually put a specific price it will buy and a specific price it will sell do you understand you can put a specific price that is the take profit and the stop loss so there's a point it will get to it will buy there's a point it will get to it will not buy do you understand that is for oco and this all this i've explained is also applicable to the sell uh, the sell orders so if you are using the oc if maybe you bought stg and you want it to you want to sell at a particular profit maybe when it gets to one dollar you have to put a price they have to put stop limits stop loss that if it falls below that point it should just exit and close the trade so that it will not incur many losses on you do you understand it will not incur so many losses on you that is that is the oco the other other limits order it means if it gets to a particular limit let it sell market it means you are selling at the current market or stop limit setting your stop loss to minimize your losses that is just the different orders that we have that is the different orders that we have then what else is now let's say we bought stg um we want to look at the stg chart we we'll just have to click this icon we we'll have to click this icon displayed here then we can access charts to be a good crypto trader you need to learn how to to, to read charts and this chart comprises of candlesticks and indicators candlesticks indicators and these indicators moving includes moving averages exponential moving averages bollinger band volume they are all specified here so let me show them to you we have the moving average we have the exponential moving average we have the bollinger band we have the volume we have the moving average convergence divergence we have the relative strength in there which is the rsi then we have the kdj so all these are necessary for you to learn how to go through charts so now this okay if you click on any of the indicator here it will be displayed bollinger band is displayed volume is displayed here you can see volume is off volume is on MACD is on rsi is on you can see it here kdj is off kdj is on so it's good as a trader that you understand this the concept of all these indicators here to better know how to analyze the market that is technical analysis and fundamental analysis so this is the chart and you can see the different time frames here we have the line we had that shows the depth of buying and selling we have the 15 minutes time frame we have the one hour time frame we have the four hours time frame we have the one day time frame then if you click on more here you see the other time frames like one minute three minutes five minutes 30 minutes two hours six hours eight hours 12 hours three days one week and one month so all these time frames are displayed so it, it is good that if you and you do your analysis based on higher time frame the four hours time frame the one day time frame at least minimum if you want to come less than that let it be two hours time frame then you have the one day three days one week time frame and all of that this will help you to better do your technical analysis and it will minimize your losses so you can see the chart displayed here this is actually a head and shoulders chart pattern that is formed here you can see the head you can see one shoulder you can see another shoulder and it is trying to break this point so you can see there's a brick so there's this coin might retest this previous support here so it might actually retest before it, there will be a pump so all these are necessary then understanding the different candlesticks 
it is good that you understand the different candlesticks. We have the hammer, we have the pimba, we have the uh, we have the Ara bullish aramai, uh, bearish aramai. We have there are so many candlesticks, and understanding the psychology behind their formation is also necessary. So when you click on the star here. When you click on this star here you are actually making that coin your favorite piece you have actually made it one of your favorites so if you update your favorite list on the spot if you click on this if you take a screenshot of this current chart and then what else if you click on this it will actually rotate your screen and make it longer for a larger a wide screen view so so uh, if you click on this rather is this if you click on this if you click on this display here if you click on this if you give it a larger wide screen then this this will actually help you to do some settings if you want to make some changes to your indicators you can actually click here and you can do those settings you can see your indicators the height of your charts then if you want to make drawings and lots more you can do that here so this these are many more okay let us go back then you can set an alert you can set an alert for a coin if it rises to an to a certain extent you want to be notified you want to be notified so this is what you do you just have to come and do your alert there so another thing so another thing we have to look at is to go to our home page how to convert a coin from one coin to another so we'll click on more we we'll click on more here We'll click on more here so we'll click on more that is displayed here so let us click on more so there are so many things you can actually access here you can transfer buy crypto recurring by deposit uh, deposit fiat deposit orders sell to card and all of that the one i want us to look at is to convert so this is it convert you can actually you can actually convert from one currency to another so you just click on convert these are some of the things some people don't know how to do so you can actually if you have bitcoin but you don't want to go through the process of buying on spot before you convert you can actually just okay i have this amount of weed so i can actually convert to ethereum or i can choose any coin i want to convert it to i'll just have to choose it maybe busd the ask i'll confirm is it load so if i want to confirm i'll just have to click on maximum and everything i have in my win here will just be converted to busd that is how to convert it's as simple as that if i want to convert if I, want, if I have another coin that i want to convert i'll just click on win i'll look for it boom let me see maybe ata i'll confirm if i want to convert it to busd i'll just click on proceed they say preview conversion and i'll just have to convert it's as easy as that my network is fluctuating a bit so i'll just have to preview conversion put the amount i want to convert and boom that's all so that's how to convert now before we talk of futures wallet let us go to p2p let us go to p2p our p2p section here this is our p2p this is our p2p section so we'll just click on p2p section here now 
I'm going to give you the tips that will help you not to be a, 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 a victim of scams on P2P because there's no platform that is 100% secure. There are still possible ways of you being scammed or losing your money to wicked vendors or to recalcitrant fellows that have imbibed the act of, of defrauding others. So now, these are the different coins I can sell on P2P. I can sell USDT, sorry, I can buy. I can buy USDT, I can buy Bitcoin, I can buy BUSD, I can buy BNB, I can buy ETH, I can buy Naira, I can buy, I can buy Solana. So you can see, this is for the buy section. Don't forget, this is for the buy section. For the buy section. Now, another, and you can see the rate people are willing to sell. So if I want to buy between 4,000 to 15,000, this is the rate they will give me in Naira for a dollar. So for one dollar, they are giving me at the rate of 699 Naira. The second person is giving at 699.06 Kobo. So this person has a list rate. So I'll go with that person if I want to buy on on Binance Pay to Pay. Then another section here is your sell. So if you, if you have any coin that you want to sell, be it USDT, be it BTC, be it BUSD or anything, that is you just have to click on sell here. As you can see people are ready to buy from you that is selling at the rate of 705 naira per dollar this person is willing to buy at the rate of 700.02 you understand now let me bring to your tips one thing i need you to take note of all, whether you are buying or selling is the number of trades and the percentage rating now this first person here he has he has has only done 15 trades and the percentage rating is 83.40 this person is new he doesn't have a verified verified vendor logo as displayed with this second person this person has a verified logo has a verified logo now look at the number of trades this person performed has performed thus far and look at his percentage rating though his rate the rate is given here is lower compared to what is here i know greed can actually set in you want to sell to this first person because he has higher rates but what if he scams you because of the number of his trade and percentage rating this person has done 1249 trades and his percentage rating is 100 percent means all the people that have traded with him has enjoyed his services do you understand that's what it means okay this person has done only 15 trades and only is getting only 83.40 percentage rating is very very wrong so if i want to sell now i'll say to this second person i'll say to this second person one because he's a verified vendor he has a verified badge on him his number of trades are higher and his percentage rating is 100 this person can never scam you but this this person there's a probability that he can scam you do you understand now i can also trade with this person here he has over 100 trades i can trade with him but anything less than 100 trades but his percentage rating is poor so i might not trade with him so i'll look for someone else if I don't trade with this second person, I'll look for someone else with. And this is the person. This is the person. He has, he has, he has done 1,068 trades, 100% rating. I can trade with him. Those will verify. Same thing with this other person here. He has done th over 300 trades. 95 percent rating very very correct so any rating below 90 i am i can't trade with that person any percentage rating that goes beyond 90 i can't trade with that person but as far as the person has drawn over 100 trades i can trade with that person so if you go to the buy 
this is also applicable in the buy so uh, this first person his rate is very low but he has done only 44 trades and 97.8 percent i will never buy from him but this second person here he has done 445 trades 98.90 percentage rating i'll buy from him this person 28 trades 100 percent i'll never buy from him 17 trades 100 percent i'll never buy from him peter will be 637 trades 77 percent rating his rating is very very poor below 80 self ah i'll never buy from him this person has done 153 trades trades and 92 percent rating i can buy from him so these are the ways to avoid scam on p2p if you take note of this so let's say for instance i want to buy now I'll just click on buy from this second person he has done over 400 trades and his percentage rating is very very okay 98.90 percentage rating so let's say i want to buy from him i am buying crypto for him so i'll click crypto so i input the amount i want to buy let me see i want to buy 11 dollars or 10 dollars worth of crypto now you can see he has a limit here so i can't buy he has a limit he's accepting so i can't buy up to 10 10 dollars or 10 usdt for him so i'll look for another person uh, okay let me buy from this person let me click on uh -huh. this person has a good limit of between 5.72 to 11.44 so this is it so this is his limit so in this place i'll impute the amount of crypto i want to buy then here binance will help me to calculate the money i will pay that person in naira now one thing with binance p2p if you are buying you be the person to credit the person into his bank account first before he will release but if you are selling he will be the one to credit you into your bank account before you release crypto to him so let me say i want to buy ten dollars worth of crypto now or eleven dollars i'll just impute i'll impute the amount i'll just put 11 you can see so this is the amount i will pay him you can see the quantity is 11 years it is then this is the amount i'll pay him that is 7,692.3 Kobo. Then I'll now click on buy. If I click on buy now, his account will be displayed. His account, you can see, his, his payment option that he will receive is bank transfer. And you can see it is displayed here, bank transfer. So if I click on buy now, it might take me to the payment page where i'll credit him into his bank account that will this that will be displayed then i'll now click on after transferring to him this there's an option that will pop up transfer notify seller so if i tr click on that after sending to his account then by now now we now lock his account telling him that the buyer has transferred money to his account that he should confirm and release crypto then you have to wait to receive alert. After receiving alert, you will not confirm and release the coin. Then to that, the coin will not be released, and I'll see it in my wallet. Same thing for the sell. For if you want to sell, if you want to sell, I just click on the sell option here. Then from there, let me see. I want to sell to this this second person. I'll just click. You see, yeah, he's, he's buying between. 10 million <laughs> so you can see the amount of USDT is buying he's buying over 14,288.42 USDT he's buying over 14.28 14,281.42 USDT that is the amount he's buying so I can't buy like $10 or anything I can't buy from this person so I have to look for someone that is buying at my rate or I can actually use a filter option 
I even for, I forgot to make mention of that. You can use a filter option here to filter the amount you want to buy or you want to sell. If let me say you want to buy or sell between you want to sell five thousand naira worth of crypto or buy. It's also this is also applicable to the buy order. So I'll just and I want to receive money through bank transfer or I want to send money through bank, bank transfer that is for the buy or I want to receive money through bank transfer if I want to sell I'll just click on bank transfer here then I'll click yes so it will not display all the people all the people that are selling all the people that are selling or that want to buy that have this amount that I want remember I said 5,000 so you can see this person is willing to buy from me at the, at the rate of 700.01 um he has between he's buying between 4000 to 5000 same is applicable to this uh, same is applicable to this second place they are buying between 4000 to 5000 so he's buying between 4000 to 7000 and if i want to sell now sell to this second person because his percentage rating is okay though his number of trees is 73 i'll just say to him i'll just click on sell so if i click on sell now if i click on sell the i'll impute the amount of usdt i want to sell and don't forget to be able to sell on p2p you're actually transferring from your spot into your funding that I discussed earlier from the beginning of this video so you have to transfer from spot to funding so when you, you transfer from spot to funding it will be displayed in this balance area displayed here so this balance area displayed here so this balance area displayed. you see the total amount of years that you want to sell so let's say I want to sell maybe uh, six USDT. You can see that only means of chain balance. I'll just click here, then I'll choose my bank. You can see these are my banks. I'll just click maybe the first one, and I'll click on sell USDT. So if I click on sell USDT, the person will be notified that someone wants to sell USDT to me, and they will not send money to my bank account. And I will confirm the payment, and boom, I'll release coin to him. So that's how. To use a p2p platform so with this i'm pretty sure you've understood how to use the finance as a newbie and you've learned some tips as an advanced trader so subscribe to the channel hit the notification button thank you